There's a really popular show on HBO called Westworld, and I really like this poster over here on the right, Westworld Black Wall Poster. This poster here is really easy to recreate in Affinity Photo, and I think it looks great on the wall. So I'm not going to be worrying about anything to do with trademarks in this video. I know it says Westworld. I'm not looking at that. I'm looking at the style of the poster, which has a computerized background, black background, and it's got a picture of a cowboy. So let's recreate that in Affinity Photo. This should be a fun walkthrough. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is grab my silhouette, and I'm on a site here called Vexels. I am going to put a link to Vexels in this video description, so if you're interested in this site and you'd like to sign up for it, it is an affiliate link. I just want to point that out, so if you do sign up and you wind up buying something, I would receive a small commission, but I really like using Vexels, and in this case, I'm going to type in Cowboy Silhouette, and let's see what comes up. Got yeah, lots of different silhouettes here, which I really enjoy, and the silhouette that I'm going to be using is this cowgirl on a horse with a lasso. I really like this design. It also gives you related content down below too, so you can really let your imagination run wild. I'm gonna grab that silhouette as well. I wanted to point out that you can grab other stuff too, like here's a knight in armor, and there's a knight on a horse. There's all sorts of different silhouette designs, but I'm gonna be going with this one here. So I'm gonna click the download button, and I'm gonna grab that. Okay, so next up, I'm gonna grab a computer picture. So I'm on unsplash.com, which is a great place for completely free pictures that you can use. And I'm going to type in computer chip as my search term, and I get back some computer circuitry. I'm gonna grab this red one over here on the right. That one looks really good to me. I simply click the download free button, and I'll use that as well. Okay, so now I'm in Affinity Photo, and I'm gonna set up my palette, and I'm gonna make it like an eight and a half by 11 kind of thing. So I'm gonna go File, New, and you get a whole bunch of different options here for sizing, but you don't need to use any of that. You can just do page width over here on the right, and I'm gonna make this pixels, and I'm gonna make my page width 2700, my page height 3600, and I'll click Create. And that gives me a nice palette here to work on for our walkthrough. So now I'm gonna insert my picture of my cowgirl. So I'm gonna go File, Place, and then I'm gonna grab my picture here, double click it, and then I'm gonna simply drag it and I can make it larger or smaller. So I'm gonna make it a nice big picture like that. I'll click the little arrow button and now I can move this around. I can center this in the palette the way I'd like. I'd actually like it a bit off center though because I want this rope to be there. So I'm gonna put it like that. Next up, I'm gonna insert the background now, which is the computer chip. So I'm gonna go file and place again and I'm gonna grab my red computer chip and I'm going to make it about half the size there we go, I love the guides that pop up. I'm gonna make, gonna make it about half the size of the width of the document. So now I've got that. Now I'm gonna, just gonna click Control C and Control V. Now it's gonna copy. You can see a second layer now is being created over here. Control C is copy and Control V is paste. I'm gonna do that again, Control C, Control V, and I'll move it down here. Control C, Control V. And what I'm doing is I'm just creating a wallpaper of this circuitry. The reason I'm doing this is because I want the circuitry to be relatively detailed. I don't want it to be just a huge picture like this, for example, because it won't be detailed enough for what I want. So instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just gonna make like a wallpaper of this circuitry. And I'm doing that now by copying and pasting and making eight images. So I've got eight layers here. So over on the right now, I'm gonna select all eight layers using the Shift key, and then I'm gonna right click, and I'm going to click Merge Visible. That's now gonna create a new layer up above of all eight stuck together. Now I can select all eight layers underneath, right click, and I can delete. So now I've only got two layers in my whole design. One is the cowgirl, and then right above it is my pixel layer of my background. I'm gonna move the cowgirl on top, and then I'm gonna right click on the cowgirl layer, and I'm going to click on this mask to below. What that's gonna do now is take like a picture and merge the two together. This is what they call a mask layer. And now we've got a great looking computerized option. Okay, now I'm gonna add a layer. So over on the right hand side, I'll click add pixel layer. And I'm going to make my layer here black. I'm going to go to my color palette, which is at the top, and I'm gonna select the white, and then I'm going to move my slider so that it, that white circle becomes black. So whatever that front circle is, that's what the computer is thinking you want the color to be. So now on the left-hand side, I'm going to go to the flood tool, and that's this paint bucket that looks like it's pouring out paint. I'm gonna click on that, and then I'm gonna click 
anywhere inside my layer because my layer is really just empty and that's going to color everything black. Now remember, I just need to move my layer underneath. So don't panic if you see it turn all black. Now I've got black and then I've got the cowgirl now with the lasso right above it. Okay, so I think this design looks pretty good so far, but if you'd like to add an extra dimension to it, you can certainly do so. So I'm going to show you how to add a circle in the background, and I think this really makes the color pop on it. So over on the left-hand side, there's an ellipse tool down near the bottom. Now you might see it listed as a rectangle tool or another type of shape. Not a big deal. Click on the shape, but then hold down your finger on the mouse. So now when you hold down the finger on the mouse, a whole bunch of shapes will pop up. And then I'm going to pick, in this case, the ellipse tool because I'm going to make a circle. From here, I'm going to make sure that my fill is not black. So my fill, I'm going to click this fill button at the top and I'm going to select, I like using this color wheel, but there's all sorts of different sliders that you can pick from. It's pretty neat. I like the color wheel though. And I'm going to pick red off of the color. So that's going to be my color that I'm going to use. You can also select this little eyedropper tool at the top as well. And you can pick right off the design. So I'm just going to hover over the black, for example, and watch over here on the right-hand side. When I click the black, it changes the front color to black. And then when I click the eyedropper tool to red, it'll select a dark red. So I want to maybe select like a lighter red. If you, you, you can also manually change the color as well. So that's what I'm going to do here in the ellipse tool. My fill comes up, and I'm going to make the red just a bit brighter. It's a personal preference, but that's what I'm going to use. Now I'm going to draw my circle. Now if I just drag my mouse, I can make the circle any shape I want. But if you hold down the Shift key, it locks in the ratio. So I've got the Shift key hold, held down, and now I can make my picture as big as I want. My circle can go small or big. So I'm going to hold down the Shift key, draw it again, let up the mouse, and there's my button. We've now got an ellipse listed here on the right hand side as well. Now I'm going to move this ellipse down to the bottom and then I'm going to just take my black background and move that right down to the bottom. So now I've got my red sitting around the horse. I think that actually looks really good and I'm going to move this just a bit up just a tiny bit. Whoops. I'm just going to move it up here a tiny bit so it captures the uh, actual lasso as well. I like having things a bit off center. I think it makes it look very arty. And so I like how the black is uniform, but the red circle is a bit off center. Now I want to point out in the actual Westworld poster that I'm looking at, there's these little red lines that are inside the blue. So I'm actually going to reverse that in Affinity Photo on my design. Okay, so this last piece is pretty easy. I'm going to create some blue inside the circuitry that's all red. So I'm going to do that on the left hand side by clicking this flood tool and then I'm going to change the color of that flood tool over on the right. You'll see this color picker over on the right and if you click it once nothing really happens but if you double click it now up comes the color chooser. Okay so now I'm going to move this along and I'm going to pick this bright blue. and I'm going to click close. So now the bright blue is the front color that's selected. Now you really want to make sure that you've got the right layer selected here. So I'm selecting my actual cowgirl picture and then I'm going to zoom in and the way you zoom in is you'll hold down the control key and you use the mouse wheel. So now I'm scrolling right in and now I can select individual little lines inside the circuitry. So I could have as much or as little as I want added. So I really like that, the way that looks. So it doesn't need to be a lot, but it just kind of adds an extra element to your design. So I hope you found that helpful. I think this picture looks really cool. And this looks great in like the man cave or, you know, a TV room, a film room. You can make a great looking design with all sorts of different silhouettes. I'd love to hear your comments and any feedback you've got. And I'd actually love to hear if you've got a suggestion for a future tutorial. I'm taking suggestions now. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks a lot for watching. And here's another video on how you can supercharge your affinity photo journey.